We're continuing in the counseling series tonight, and our lesson is entitled, Who We Are in Christ and What We Have as Children of the Most High God. What is our possession? What is our birthright, our inheritance? And so this is a, a wonderful lesson, and it, it begins in the book of Ephesians of nine different things that Christ has done for us when he went to the cross and made an atonement for our sins. And now that we're born again, we are just blessed. We are a very blessed people. So we begin with Ephesians 1 verse 3. It said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly places mm. in Christ. So it's wonderful. Yes. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. You know, whatever is available. And verse 3 uh, really points up to verse 1. I'll, I'll start there. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to the saints who are at Ephesus and who are faithful in Christ Jesus. And so this is addressed to those who are faithful, faithful followers of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, these things are true. Uh, he has chosen us, Ephesians 4, 1 verse 4. It says, just... As he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. Now, he chose us. It, it's true that when we come to the Lord Jesus Christ, when we repent, when we are truly sorry for our sin, uh, the meeting place, as we have talked before, the meeting place between God and man mm -hmm. is, is the cross. And mm -hmm. so God designed man mm -hmm. to be in this love relationship. This is God's plan. See, mm -hmm. what is chosen is his plan. You know, mm -hmm. and it says he's chosen us. But his desire is that all would come to repentance. And so when he went to the cross, he made provision for all. Mm. And the chosen are those who respond to God's call. You know, he calls us to repentance. He calls us to the cross. And when we repent of our sin and God sees the sincerity of it, he makes real the atoning work of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so faith is the meeting place between God and man. God calls us. He woos us. He made that provision for us in Christ. We respond in faith. And that's the meeting place. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And so the called... It's a, it's a reference to those who respond to the call of God. He initiates, mm -hmm. we respond. Because he's the bridegroom and we're the bride. Mm -hmm. And the bride responds to the, to the wooing of, of the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. what is chosen before the foundation of the world was God's plan of redemption. Not necessarily individual people. Because we were not here. But in his mind, he knew that there would be a body. He knew that he would have spiritual children. And, it, and before the cross, you know, he, he's done his atoning work. And it's available for whosoever will. What's been predestinated is his plan. Who responds... It's up to us. Mm -hmm. And so this was written to those who are faithful in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so the faithful ones have been called. And they've responded to the call. Therefore, they are referred to as the called. 
But what a what a wonderful thing mm. that yeah. that he has chosen us. And again, the, the choosing of us is based upon our response. That we have repented, we've seen our need of a savior, we've cried out to him with our whole heart. Jesus has provided the way of salvation, you know, and our faith reaches out, and then he he chooses us. He he draws us to himself. Mm-hmm. We choose him, he chooses chooses us. He takes the initiative. Like it says, we love because he first loved us. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's always he always takes the leadership. Mm-hmm. And so we are referred to as the chosen. Mm-hmm. Uh, pre, he predestined us. And again, the us is not necessarily specific individuals. It's that he would have a body. He knew that there would be respondents. Mm-hmm. It's whosoever will. The call goes out to the whole world. Those who respond are referred to as the called ones. And so what has been predestinated is the plan of salvation. He predestined us to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself, according to the kind intention of his will. So he willed that all should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. See, mm-hmm. that's his will. But not all do. Mm-hmm. And again, this is written to those who are faithful in Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. That he's predestined us, you know, now that we're the faithful. Now, he's predestined us uh, to be conformed to the image of the Son. Mm-hmm. See, that's what's predestinated. That we would be holy and blameless before him in love. That's verse 4. So he chose us from the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before him in love. Mm -hmm. See, that's what's been predetermined. That God had a plan to rescue man from his sin. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Hallelujah. We should be holy (laughs) and blameless before him in this love relationship. Mm -hmm. See, that's, that's what's been predestinated. The who? Hallelujah. It's whosoever will. You know, it's open to the whole world. It's Mm -hmm. open to everyone. Not everyone receives because not everyone repents. Mm -hmm. And when we truly repent, then God, you know, I'm I'm choosing you. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Uh, He's made us accepted, Ephesians 1, 6. Uh, to the praise of his grace, which he freely bestowed upon us. Uh, he's abounded toward us. I'm sorry, he redeemed us, Ephesians 1, 7. In him we have redemption through his blood. And what redemption is, it, it tells us, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace. The redemption is through the shed blood, but what it accomplishes is our forgiveness. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. He's redeemed us by his precious blood. And he's redeemed us from hell. He's redeemed us from sin. He's redeemed us from the consequences, mm-hmm. you know, that should have come our way because the soul mm-hmm. of the sinner that shall die. So he's redeemed us from eternal destruction. He's redeemed us from hell. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Uh, through the forgiveness of our sin, now we're holy and blameless before him in love. See, that's who we are in Christ. And see, once we know that, once we understand who we are, mm-hmm. now we can pray, you know, and, and boldly come before the throne. Uh, because there's nothing hindering. You know, we're holy and blameless. Mm-hmm. We're walking in love, and he's cleansed us. We have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our tra- trespasses. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm. Abounded. The sixth thing is he's bounded towards us, 1-8. 
which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insights. You know, it's just lavish. It's just abounding. It's mm -hmm. overflowing. His grace, mercy, love, forgiveness. He made known unto us, Ephesians 1, 9. He has made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his kind intention, which he proposed in him. And the mystery of his will is, you know, this love relationship is restored. In the cross of Jesus accomplished it. We're redeemed by his blood. The sin problem is taken care of. Hallelujah. And then he gives the Holy Spirit to empower us uh, to live that overcoming love, life <laughs> of love. What a wonderful Savior. Verse 7, made known unto us, Ephesians 1, 9, he made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his kind intention which he proposed in him. Verse, uh, point 8, he's given us an inheritance, Hebrew, I'm sorry, Ephesians 1, 11 and 14. Also, we have an obtain an inheritance having been predestinated according to his purpose who works all things after the counsel of his will and the inheritance that he has predestined is that love relationship mm -hmm. and everything that pertains to the relationship you know the the wisdom from god righteousness sanctification redemption mm -hmm. you know the answers to prayer Heirs of Christ, you know, the riches of our inheritance, um, divine healings available, the, the needs are, are met by Christ Jesus on the basis of faith. And so that's what he's predetermined. That's our inheritance. And once we know our inheritance... Uh, then we simply can come before him in faith and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for providing for me. Lord, this is my inheritance. Verse 14, I'll uh, read 13. In him you also, after listening to the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, having believed, you are also sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is given as a pledge of your inheritance, of our inheritance, with a view to the redemption of God's own possession, to the praise of his glory. So it's given as a pledge uh, to, the, to the redemption of God's possession. So he has redeemed us by his blood, you know, and now we have a pledge, the down payment you know, the fullness is when we get to heaven, mm -hmm. but he's given us a down payment. Mm -hmm. And he said the Holy Spirit is that pledge, that seal, mm -hmm. you know, that we've met the requirements. Mm -hmm. You know, it's signed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. We're sealed by the Holy Spirit. And the seal means this one's genuine. <laughs> it's not a fake. He didn't go to the internet and pull this diploma off of the internet and just fill in your name. You know, this one is genuine because he got the seal of the Holy Spirit. So he sealed us. Okay, point two. We are also joint heirs with Jesus Christ. That means everything that is in the possession of the Father, is given to the Son. And if we are joint heirs with him, then everything that comes to Christ, we share in equally. That's what joint, <laughs> joint and severally, <laughs> that's what it means, joint heirs. Romans 8, 15 through 17. you have not received a spirit of slavery leading to fear again, 
But you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by which we cry out, Abba, Father. And the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And of children, heirs also, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, in order that we may also be glorified with him. So heirs with Christ, joint heirs. Uh, so there is available to us, according to, to that, everything that was available to, to Jesus. He makes it available to us, because you're a joint heir. Now, I think that's why Jesus said, the things that I do, you shall do also, and greater things mm. than these shall you do, because I go to my Father. Mm. See, once we know who we are, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we'll see our prayers answered. Mm. Romans 4, 13 and 14. For, it, for if those who are of the law are heirs, faith is made void, and the promise is nullified. For the law brings about wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. So we are not heirs of the law, we are heirs of grace. Well, let's look at James 2.5. Listen, my beloved children, did not God choose the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, mm. which he promised to those who loved him? Mm. They were heirs to the kingdom. Mm. And his kingdom is now. Mm -hmm. You know, because the king is reigning. Mm -hmm. And we're part of his kingdom. Uh, Galatians 3. 26 through 29. For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For all of you who are baptized into Christ Jesus have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Mm. There's neither slave nor freeman. There's neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Mm -hmm. So he, he even goes back and includes us in the blessings promised to Abraham. Mm -hmm. That we are heirs of faith, heirs according to the promise. Titus 3, 3 through 7. For we, we also once were ourselves foolish, disobedient, deceived, enslaved to various lusts and pleasures, spending our own life in malice mm -hmm. and envy, hateful, hating one another. But when the kindness of our God and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us. Mm -hmm. Not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, mm -hmm. but according to his mercy, by the washing of regeneration and the renewing by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out upon us richly through Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we might be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life, justified by his grace. Now we're a son. We're made heirs. We're fellow partakers of, of the resources of heaven. Hallelujah. Lord, open our eyes to understand that, that the resources are available, and we're your children, so we have a just claim upon them. 
We don't have to come sniveling and groveling. Uh, we come with confidence. We come with humility, but confidence that he hears our prayers. And he's going to answer because we're his children. He loves us. Mm-hmm. So we're joint heirs. Uh, number one, he gathered us together. Ephesians 1.10. with the view of an administration suitable to the fullness of times, that is, the summing up of all things in Christ, things in the heavens, things on earth, in him. So Mm. everything is Christ-centered, gathered in him. Ephesians 2, 5, and 6. Even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places Mm -hmm. in Christ. Mm -hmm. So we're, once we're in that relationship, you know, Mm -hmm. we're with him, we're seated in the heavenly places, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Far above all rule, authority, power, dominion, every name that is named. Uh, We are sealed by the Holy Spirit. We've covered that already. You know, he sealed us. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have that inheritance, that promise. Uh, Look up Romans 8, 11. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also quicken or give life to your mortal bodies Mm -hmm. through his spirit who indwells you. Hallelujah. That's part of our inheritance. He'll quicken. He'll give us the energy, the strength that we need. Our mortal bodies, you know, not just our spiritual body, but, Mm. you know, this flesh and blood Mm. uh, temple that we walk around in. Mm -hmm. Uh, the church, his body, Ephesians 1, 22 and 23. Let's see, 22. And he put all things into subjection under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which his body, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So he put all things in subjection under his feet. Mm-hmm. So he is the head. <clears throat> if we're the body, that means we're the feet, we're the arms, we're the heart. And he said he's put everything under his feet. Mm-hmm. Well, if we're his body, then the devil is under our feet. Mm -hmm. You know, we have authority. We have dominion. He has put all things under his feet. And we're his body. That means, (laughs) hallelujah. See? Uh, He's trying to let us know that the the devil does not have authority over us. That's right. And see, that's the basis of um, deliverance that we talked about in the past. You know, We have authority through Jesus Christ. He cast out demons. He's given us that authority. He says, he put all things in subjection under his feet. Gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body. Mm -hmm. Now the feet are part of the body. Mm -hmm. And he said all things are under his feet. Mm -hmm. See, so that's, that's... the basis that we go forward, you know, with this authority that we have in Christ Jesus our Lord. He, in, in Genesis, we have the dominion mandate. Right. That we have authority over, over all the all of creation. But this is the spiritual dominion mandate. It is. It's the same. It's like Old and New Testament. Mm-hmm. But the authority that he 
has given us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's part of our inheritance. Mm -hmm. That's part of who we are in Christ. He is the head, we are his body. I never connected that. You know, the feet, yeah. that we're his feet. <laughs> we are. <laughs> well, I didn't either. Because we're the ones walking around yeah. in the world of his hands right. of healing mm -hmm. uh, in this world. Praise we're his God. heart. You know, the, he wants to love yeah. people through us. Mm -hmm. So we are, the church is his body. Uh, we sit in heavenly places, Ephesians 2.6. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ. Mm -hmm. So we're his body. Mm -hmm. you know. So we're, his body is here on earth. His body is at the right hand of the Father. And so if we're there at the right hand of the Father, if we're sitting with him in heavenly places, then all authority, he said, in heaven mm -hmm. and on earth mm -hmm. be given to you. So we're seated with him in the heavenly mm -hmm. places, with that right hand of power, and upon earth. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. uh, we are his workmanship, 2.10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk with him. So we are his workmanship. He is transformed us by the grace of God, you know, from the filthy rags that we were in the past to, mm -hmm. to a new creature in Jesus Christ, uh, and he's predestinated us for good works, and the good works are simply works that come from a heart of love. That's what he's prepared for us to walk in. It's not specific, well, tomorrow you've got to mail the letter for the neighbor that can't get out. You know, that's not what's predestinated. Mm -hmm. The good works are works that stem from a heart of love. Mm -hmm. Now, he may prompt you by his Holy Spirit to mail the letter for the neighbor, and that would be a, a work of love. Yes. Uh, yes. But the, what he has predestinated that we should walk in is that love relationship. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And then whenever we have opportunity, you know, in our daily life, we just do what Christ would do. Mm -hmm. We're his hands, we're his feet. He wants to live out his li life in and through us. But we are his workmanship. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And he doesn't make junk. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> he's, a, he's a master craftsman. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so... So he delights to take something that's dilapidated. People want to throw it out and say it's worth nothing, it's worthless, you're no good, you're nothing. And he polishes them up yeah. and, you know, that's takes true. his hammer and nails and plane yeah. and, you know, yeah. he, he con conforms us into the image of his son. Mm -hmm. You know, he keeps sanding that sandpaper to, mm -hmm. you know, until we're conformed to his image. We are his workmanship. Uh, we're fellow citizens, Ephesians 2, 18 through 22. For through him we both have our access in one spirit to the Father, referring to the Jews and the Gentiles, all believers, so that you're no longer strangers and aliens, but you're fellow citizens with the saints who are of God's household, having been built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being fitted together, is growing into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together into a dwelling of God in the spirits. And so we're now the, the habitation of God. Another verse on that is 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? If any man destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy and that's 
what you are. Mm. So don't, you know, we are the temple of God. We are mm. his habitation here upon this earth. No longer the temple in Jerusalem. Temple made without hands, the human heart. Mm. It says, if any man destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him. Mm. To me, that's a serious mm. warning against mm. suicide. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm. You know, because he says, you're a temple of God. And mm. if you destroy that temple, he's talking about our body. Mm -hmm. If you destroy it, God will destroy him. That, to me, that's, that's mm. pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. Because really, suicide is the ultimate act of selfishness. Mm -hmm. You know, and it hurts a lot of other people besides the one that, that oh, it does it. You're going to say something? No, I said it really does. It, it, yeah. it isn't just the person. It's no. Everybody. It's the whole community. It is. Parties. So many are. It's very far reaching. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, we're, we have boldness and access to the Father, Ephesians 3.12. in whom we have boldness and competent access through faith in him to go right to the throne. Uh, Hebrews 4, 14 through 16. Very similar passage. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. We do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in all things such as we are and yet without sin. Mm -hmm. Let us therefore draw near with confidence and boldness to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Mm -hmm. So boldness, confidence, we can come before him. We have confidence because the, the relationship is clean. Mm -hmm. See, this idea of, you know, carnal Christianity, that, you, that you're sinning all the time, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> there's so much more than that. Oh, yes. Yes. You know, that's really not Christianity. He no. wants the holiness and blamelessness that he talked about, mm -hmm. that love relationship uh, yes. where where the sin is gone, we're redeemed from it. Mm -hmm. He set us free from it. Then we can have boldness. Mm -hmm. See, it's sin that makes people cowards. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because they know they're unworthy. Mm -hmm. they, ha yeah. they have a deep yeah. sense that, you know, I'm not worthy. Mm -hmm. But when, when the sin is gone, the conscience is clean, yeah. you know, then... You can come before the throne as a child and put yourself in his loving arms and, and you say, well, what can I do for you today, son, mm. daughter? You know, mm. then, then the prayers come. The answers to prayer come. Uh, he also refers to us as children and light of God. Ephesians 5, 8. For you are sometimes darkness, but now you are you light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Mm, yes. Children of light. And what does light represent in the Bible? True purity. Truth, exactly. We're not of darkness. Mm -hmm. That's the enemy's domain. We're children of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, let's skip over to 1 John 1, 5, and 7. And this is the message that we have heard from him and announced to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. Mm -hmm. In verse 7. But if we yeah. walk in the light as he himself is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. I'll go back and read 6. If we 
say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness is that we lie and don't practice the truth. And to me, that's where so much of Christianity is today. They, they say they have fellowship with him, but yet they're not overcoming. Mm -hmm. And in fact, they think it's totally impossible. Mm -hmm. uh, they think that, you know, you're born that way. You, you know, there's mm -hmm. no way uh, a person can walk before God in holiness. Mm -hmm. And if they have that mentality, that's where they're going to live. Mm -hmm. But Jesus said, no, you're children of the day. Mm -hmm. And if you walk in the light as he in, is in the light, then you're going to have fellowship with one another. The blood of Jesus mm -hmm. Christ cleanses you from all sin. Amen. Not just 75, 85%. All sin. All sin. <laughs> all sin. And if it's all removed and cleansed, then you're righteous before God. You're holy before God. Mm -hmm. And like it says in 1 John, if our heart condemns us not, then we have confidence mm -hmm. before him that whatsoever we ask in his name, you know, he hears us and we know mm -hmm. that he hears us and whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the request that we've asked of him. See, if we know that, that's our faith. Amen. You know, the faith that won't be denied, Lord. <laughs> See, and that's where if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, speak to that mountain, be removed, cast, don't doubt in your heart, it'll happen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So again, the reason we're going through this lesson, once we understand who we are in Christ, then our prayers are, are much more powerful, you know, mm -hmm. and our yes. faith is built up. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's that expectation, Lord, this is our inheritance. Mm -hmm. This is our birthright. We're your child. <laughs> we're an heir. It's there for us. Mm -hmm. And we're here to just to get our little part. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. So Jesus has redeemed us from the curse. We also need to know this very well. Galatians 3.13. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So he's redeemed us from the curse of the law. And as we discussed in previous lesson, the law is not a curse. The law reveals the heart of God. The law reveals what reality is. Mm -hmm. The law is love for God and love for man. Mm -hmm. That's the essence of the law. He's redeemed us from the curse of the law, the curse of the penalty connected with breaking the law. Mm -hmm. That's what he's redeemed us from. Mm -hmm. You know, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Right. See, that's the curse of the law, death, mm -hmm. spiritual death. And he's redeemed mm -hmm. us from that curse. That even though I have sinned mm -hmm. and am guilty of death, deserve mm -hmm. to suffer forever in hell, He's redeemed me from that curse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> and given me heaven. Yes. So he's redeemed us. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm. I'm going to skip over this Leviticus 26, 13 through 38 is pretty interesting. But it, it, it lists, God it spells out in black and white some of the curse of the law. So we need to know what it is so we know what we're redeemed from. Mm -hmm. Starting with 13. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt so that you should not be their slaves. And I broke the bars of your yoke and made you to walk erect. And of course, in a spiritual sense, that's what he wants us to do as well, liberate us from our slavery and bondage to the devil and our bondage to sin mm -hmm. and make us walk erect, righteously. Mm -hmm. But if you do not obey me and do not carry out these commandments, if indeed you reject my statutes 
And if your soul abhors my ordinances so as not to carry out my commandments and so break my covenants, I in turn will do this to you. I'll appoint over you a sudden terror, consumption, and fever. You shall waste away the eyes and cause the soul to pine away. Also, you shall sow your seed uselessly, for your enemies will eat it up. And I will set my face against you so that you shall be struck down before your enemies. And those who hate you shall rule over you. And you shall flee when no one is pursuing you. If after these things you do not obey me, then I'll punish you seven times more for your sins. And I'll break down your pride of power. I will make your sky like iron and your earth like bronze. So you're saying, hey, I'm going to send a drought. You know, I'm going to wither your crop. There's not going to be anything you can do about it. And your strength shall be spent uselessly, for your land shall not yield its produce, and the trees of the land shall not yield their fruit. If then you act with hostility against me and are unwilling to obey me, and again, the act of the will, mm -hmm. choosing, because that's what sin is, the choice to deliberately disobey God. Yeah. I will increase the plague on you seven times according to all of your sins. And I'll let loose among you the beasts of the field, which will bereave you of your children and destroy your cattle and reduce your number so that your roads will lie deserted. And if by these things you're not turned to me, but act with hostil hostility against me, then I'll act with hostility against you. And I, even I, will strike you seven times on your, for your sins. And I'll bring upon you a sword which will execute vengeance for the covenant. And when you gather together into your cities, I'll send pestilence among you. You ever heard of COVID-19? <laughs> so that you shall be delivered from en your enemy's hands. When I break this, your staff of bread, ten women will bake your bread in one oven. And they'll bring back your bread in ration amounts so that you will eat and not be satisfied. Yet in spite of this, if you do not obey me, but act with hostility before me, then I will act with wrathful hostility against you, and I, even I, will punish you seven times for your sin. Further, you shall eat the flesh of your sons and the flesh of your daughters. You shall eat. I will destroy your high places, cut down your incense altars, heap up your remains on the remains of your idols, for my soul shall abhor you. <coughs> I shall lay waste your cities as well, and will make your sanctuaries desolate, and I will not smell your soothing aromas, and I will make your land desolate, so that your enemies who settle in it shall be appalled over it. That's the curse of the law, my friends. Wow. <laughs> yeah. It's utter ruin. It is. Yes. Utter it's utter ruin. Yeah. And God says, I yes. redeemed you from that. Wow. You know, that was your portion. That's what you deserved. Mm -hmm. But I've redeemed you. Mm -hmm. The redemption of the cross. Redeemed by his blood. The forgiveness of our trespasses. Wow. And so this redemption uh, is for the physical man, Matthew 8, 17. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. Yeah, referring to the healing of Jesus and the, the prophecy. And, and so that's part of the covenant. Mm -hmm. You know, that he'll heal our physical bodies. Uh, he'll take care of our material needs. 2 Corinthians 8, 9.
For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that through that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, through his poverty, might become rich. Right. Mm. And the riches are not merely, you know, money in the bank. It's true mm -hmm. heavenly spiritual riches mm -hmm. that we have in Christ Jesus our Lord, that, that all of the possessions of heaven, the grace of God, the love of God, the peace of God, mm -hmm. those things are priceless. And he said that I'm giving you these true riches uh, through the through what Christ did when he humbled himself, mm -hmm. became poor in spirit, gave his, his life that we could have in true riches. Then, of course, the gift of eternal life, Ephesians 2, and let's read 1 through 9. This is a whole, beautiful passage. And you are dead in your trans trespass and sins in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. That's the devil. His spirit is working in the unbelievers. Mm -hmm. Among them, we too all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest, you know, become our nature. Mm -hmm. But God, being rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even while we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ, mm -hmm. by grace you've been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him, in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, in order that in the ages ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, lest any man should boast. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So we have these true riches and he's redeemed us from you know the curse of the law we have the forgiveness of sin we're cleansed from sin we're made whole and so we're also a healed people in, in point five isaiah 55 verse 5 53 verse 5 but he was pierced for our transgression Gresham's. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds we are healed. Hallelujah. Mm. So healing is, is part of our inheritance. Ephesians, I'm sorry, Exodus 23:25. And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Mm. What a wonderful promise. Mm -hmm. You know, that's our inheritance. Mm -hmm. I'll take sickness from the midst of thee. Well, there's something we do, and there's things we do. Ephesians 15, 26. I'm sorry, Exodus 15, 26. And he said, if you will give earnest heed to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight and give ear to his commandments and keep all of his statutes. So there's four conditions there. Mm -hmm. so that's our part. Then he says, I'll put none of these diseases on you which I've put on the Egyptians for I, the Lord, am your mm -hmm. healer. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Psalm 103, 2 and 3. Wonderful reminder. Psalm 
Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all of your iniquities, who heals all of your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion. Hallelujah. Forgives all of our sins, heals diseases. All of them. All of them. Yes. That's right. It's, it's, they're, they're connected with the covenant. Mm -hmm. He heals us body, soul, and spirit. And in verse 1, it's what we're supposed to do. We're to bless the Lord mm -hmm. and all my soul and all that is, in within, that is within me. Mm -hmm. We are to bless His holy name. Mm -hmm. Paul says that. Amen. Psalm 107, 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Mm -hmm. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness. He sent his word and healed. Matthew 4, 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and teaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness, mm -hmm. and all manner of disease among the people. Hallelujah. All manner. Oh. Uh, James 5.15, that's the one that says, to call for the elders yes. of the church, mm -hmm. let them anoint him with oil, pray over mm -hmm. him in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord or raise them up. Mm -hmm. And the first Peter two twenty four is repeat of Isaiah fifty three by his stripes where he healed. Although Peter uses past tense by his stripes you were healed. Because he's looking back at the cross, the finished mm -hmm. work of Christ that made it all possible. Mm -hmm. So on our next page we see that we are now a prosperous people. Uh, that God has promises to provide for us. Deuteronomy 8, verse 18. Be thou, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore, unto thy fathers, as it is this day. Right. And so we looked at verses that mm -hmm. said that we are heirs to the promises of Abraham. Mm -hmm. You know, and he said this power to get wealth is uh, confirms the covenant. Yes. Now we're in the new covenant. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have the true riches in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. But I believe this is world. He will also. Worldly he will also. Yes. The believer who is submitted to God will be he a will. vessel for what he gives. He will. He will not hold on to it. Right. It'll destroy him if he does. Right. Mm -hmm. And if he gives, it'll be heaped up, pressed down, running mm -hmm. over the measure they mm -hmm. meet out. It'll be given back to him. Mm -hmm. Joshua 1 8. So these promises of, of prosperity are, are part of our heritage, inheritance. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have success. Praise the Lord. Psalm 112, 1-3. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon the earth. I like that. Amen. <laughs> the generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth Mm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I took that verse for my family. Yes. Verse two. Yes. 
Wealth and riches are in his house. His righteousness endures forever. And again, that, that's based on the pure heart and the loving relationship. If the heart is selfish, you know, God's not going to bestow wealth. Um, it's, you know, he entrusts it to those that um, are faithful. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. What a wonderful promise. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Luke mm -hmm. six thirty eight. Given it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, and shaken together, mm -hmm. and running over. Mm. Shall men give unto your bosom? <coughs> for with the same measure, for with the same measure, <laughs> you that you meet or you give, wherewithal it shall be measured to you again. There is, you know, there's the expectation that you're going to be giving, and mm -hmm. it'll come back. Mm -hmm. yes. But if you are stingy, yes. it just doesn't work. You know, That's and you don't give work. for that yeah. purpose. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. You know. It's a result if it when the heart is loving. Mm -hmm. Because you can't out give God. You know, and and he replenishes. He provides seed to the sower and bread to the eater. He'll mm -hmm. he'll bring that return. Second Corinthians nine verse eight. And God is able to make all grace abound to you so that you always having all sufficiency in everything, you may have an abundance for every good deed. Mm. As it is written, he scattered abroad, he gave to the poor, his righteousness abides forever. Now he mm. who supplies so seed to the sower and bread to the eater will also supply and multiply your seed for sowing. And increase the harvest of your righteousness. Mm -hmm. You know that seed for sowing that shows that he'll give you something to work at to benefit your neighbor, your community, whatever. Mm -hmm. But he expects us to work. Because mm -hmm. yes. the sower got the seed. Yes. Uh, uh, the Philippians 4.19 is my God shall supply all, all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Uh, 3 John 2 is, I would above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. So we're, we're not only prosperous, we have, the, we have strength from the Lord. Uh, 2 Samuel 22.40. You see strength for the battle. Thou hast girded me with strength for battle. Thou hast subdued under me those who rose up against me. So strength for the battle. Mm -hmm. you now whatever battles we're facing, God promises he'll give us strength to go through it. I, I love that promise. Uh, Psalms, th this should be 4 verse 8. I think that's a misprint. Let's look at Psalm 4, verse 8. In peace I will both lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. So another precious promise. He's mm -hmm. going to protect us. Mm -hmm. Psalm 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Yeah. The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom shall I dread? Because he'll defend me and protect me. 
Well, I like verse two because when the wicked, even my mm -hmm. enemies and their and my foes, mm. came upon me to eat up my flesh, because he said, "Who am I going? Who am I to be scared of?" Mm -hmm. He said, "They stumbled and fell." Mm -hmm. Amen. The whole mm -hmm. Egyptian army stumbled and fell and were covered with blood. Amen. Yeah. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. These are wonderful promises it is. for us. <laughs> this is our inheritance. Uh, Nehemiah 8.10, you know that one, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So he gives us peace, he gives us joy, and that gives us spiritual strength. Uh, Romans 8.31 says, if God is for us, who can be against us? Mm -hmm. Ephesians 3.16 that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through the Spirit in your inner being. Hallelujah. Mm. See, that's part of our inheritance. In 2 Timothy 1, 7. I like that. Um, Ephesians 3, 20, that was also one of them. Yeah. That was on Did you one. want to read that? Yeah. You have it? No, no, one? no. Go, go ahead. Go, go ahead, Mark. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power at work within us. Yes, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly oh. beyond. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then the first, second Timothy 1, 7, for God has not given us a spirit of timidity or fear, but of power, love, in a sound mind. Mm. Uh, we also, our next category, we also have dominion and authority over mm. all the power of the devil. Uh, Genesis 1, 26 and 27 is the original uh, dominion mandate. Then God said, let us make man in our image mm. according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the sky, over every living thing that moves on the earth. So God has given man dominion. You know, in our, the philosophy of our generation, is, you know, totally tries to go against that and says that, you know, Mother Earth, you know, we, you know, we have to <coughs> step back and, and let Mother Earth have her way, let her have dominion. And, but God has given that to us. Mm -hmm. You know, not that we are to spoil his creation. Mm -hmm. uh, he said to, to tend the garden and keep it, you know, make it beautiful, make it useful. Um, so I, I do believe that we are to be good stewards mm -hmm. of the earth, you know, not mm -hmm. polluted. I do agree with that. But we do have authority. You know, and the state tries to take that away. It says, well, you know, you can hunt this kind of animal, but you can't hunt that kind of animal. Or you can shoot this bird, but not that bird. And, um, you know, the, that is, human governments have taken away uh, this dominion mandate. And said, no, we're, we're going to be God. We're going to tell you what you can and well, can't do. God given rights. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They've yep. taken, the they've taken rights. away God-given rights, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to me, they've done that with uh, with our property rights as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know, and with the all all of these the zoning regulations, I mean, they've just totally stripped away the God-given right uh, to your land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, it is what it is, but we have an enemy. Mm -hmm. out there. But God's original plan was that we'd have dominion. And we do have spiritual dominion. 
that's never been taken away over all the power of the enemy. Uh, Psalm 8, verse 6. Thou madest him to do, to have dominion over the work or works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Mm. All things under his feet. Yes. You know, just thinking back of what we were talking about, you know, a, a friend told me about, you know, a building inspection and uh, measuring the, you know, the distance of the steps and it was off a quarter inch, you know. So here somebody says, you know, you can't live in this house because, you know, your treads, your stair treads are a quarter inch more or less than what they should be. Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> what are the guys though? Big basketball player that needs to take big steps, or a midget that needs to take small steps, but this one rule fits all, right? You no, know, and we're right. deciding what's best for you and what what you can do in your house. And unless it's to the quarter of an inch, we're not going to give you an occupancy permit. I'm saying, excuse me, right. whose money is this that built this house? Right. Who is it built for? Right. You know, can I customize it for my needs? Right. What would you do if they were like three foot eight, three foot nine, four foot, and the building code was built beyond that? Yeah. For I mean, them people. Yeah, it would be. Right. It, it'd it, would, be it would make sense. Terrible. So instead of having, you know, 16 steps, you, they'd need. 23, get the same. But see, it's the one size fits all, and Washington knows best. Lord have mercy on us. So we're in the world, but not not of it. But we do have dominion and authority. Did we do the 8 6? I don't think we have that yet. Um, Yes, we did. Eight, six, we did. Nine, Thou dost make eight, him rule over the work of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We saw that under his feet is yes. under Our the feet, feet of the church. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, Psalm 91.10. No evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent. Praise yeah. the Lord. Now, Romans 6.14 says, Sin shall not have dominion over you, because you're under grace, not under the law. Mm-hmm. So we have dominion over it. Sin shall not have dominion over you. Yes. That means you have dominion over it. That's right. That's our inheritance. Yeah, That's our birthright. Yeah, the Christ government's trying to put that on. <laughs> right? Right. They're trying to make you sin. Hmm. Uh, James, James 4, 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Yes, because we have dominion over him. 1 Peter 2, 9. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, Mm. so that you may proclaim the excellence of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Uh, We also have God's peace. Isaiah 26, verse 3. The steadfastness of mind will keep you in perfect peace because he trusts in you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Keep him in perfect peace. 
Yes. Uh, Romans 2, verse 10. The glory and honor and peace to every soul of man who does good to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And then Romans 5, 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, yeah, so the peace with God. So we've laid down our weapons of rebellion. We're not in warfare against him anymore. We have signed a peace treaty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and once we yes. sign that peace treaty, by giving our lives to God, you know, his peace fills our hearts. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not that agitation anymore. You know, when mm -hmm. sin's there, everything's churning yes. and agitated, yes. Yes. conscious, <laughs> guilty. But when he comes, peace. Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Mm. Uh, we have the mind of Christ. Ephesians 1, 9. Again, these are the benefits. These, this is our inheritance. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his kind intention, which he purposed in him. Okay. First uh, Corinthians two sixteen. For who has understood the mind of the Lord? so as of to instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so our thinking is transformed. Mm -hmm. You know, we're no longer thinking like the world does. But his love constrains us. Now that does not mean that we're going to be um, omniscient and know all things like mm -hmm. he does. Right. Uh, but having the mind of Christ is, is that attitude and that loving heart and he will reveal knowledge to us is as quick as we're willing to obey it. <laughs> you know, he'll give us that light. He'll give us as much as we're willing to walk in. Mm -hmm. He will withhold no good thing from those who walk uprightly. But but he, he wants to reveal more of himself to us. Second Timothy 1 7, we read that already. Mm -hmm. That God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Uh, we're also overcomers. Mm -hmm. uh, Second Corinthians 2 14. But thanks be to God who always leads us in his triumph in Christ and manifest through us the sweet aroma mm. of the knowledge of him in every place. Mm. So we are overcomers. Yes. He leads us in the, his triumph. You know, he's, he's won the battle. Mm -hmm. And so we just follow him. Right. You know, he leads us in his triumph. Uh, 1 John 4.4 4. You are God's little children and have overcome them because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. So we are overcomers and we are also loved greatly by God. Ephesians 2, 4. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he has loved us, mm. even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By, by grace you have been saved. And, oh, that's it. Yes. 
And so we have, you know, many verses that we know that God truly loves us. Mm -hmm. If we have any questions about it, we just look at the cross. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. It says God demonstrated his own love towards us, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So knowing our position in Christ and who we are in Christ, now we can become intercessors, you know, because we have our foundation. We know who we are, we know who he is, we know what his promises are, and now we can intercede. So we're going to the next lesson, which is entitled Intercession. And so under point A, we are to pray in the Spirit, Ephesians 6, 18. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit and with this in view. Be on alert with all perseverance and petition for all of the saints. So I said, pray, pray at all times in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Jude 20, as that verse says, building yourself up in the most holy faith, praying mm -hmm. in the Holy Spirit. Yes. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 2 and 4. For one, in, one who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands, but in his spirit, he speaks mysteries. And then in verse 4, one who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but one who prophesies edifies the church. And so it's talking of the tongues as a prayer language of praying in the Spirit. And then in the 15th verse of the same chapter, Paul says, what is the outcome then? I shall pray with the Spirit, and I shall pray with the mind also. I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the mind also. Mm -hmm. So when he says, I shall pray, it's an act of the will. Mm -hmm. And he says there's two ways to pray. He says, pray in the spirit, which is that prayer language God gives us, mm -hmm. or to pray with our mind, or understanding. And he wouldn't use the word also, if they're both the same, mm -hmm. because he's contrasting mm -hmm. one with the other. He right. said, I will pray with the spirit, mm -hmm. I'll pray with my mind also. Mm -hmm. and, and so praying in the spirit, uh, we can have the burden of a friend, a need, whatever it is upon our heart, and throughout the day we can just lift that up before the Lord as the, the Holy Spirit gives us utterance. Mm -hmm. And then there will be times when we'll, we'll pray with our mind, you know, and mm -hmm. our own native tongue, you know, will, mm -hmm. you know, bring our petition, Lord, mm -hmm. just bless, heal, mm -hmm. deliver, whatever the, whatever the prayer need is. Mm -hmm. But often, even while you're going about your work, just silently in your spirit, you can be interceding mm -hmm. uh, before the Lord. Either way, in your mind, it doesn't have to be vocal. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in your English understanding or in the unknown uh, prayer language that he gives us. Mm -hmm. uh, we see man's dominion. We already looked at that. Uh, the mm -hmm. dominion ma mandate that he made us to rule mm -hmm. over his earth. Romans 8, 6. Uh, we read that as well. He, he Psalm. made us Psalm 8, 6. We that God has that. made us to rule over things. He put mm -hmm. all things under his mm -hmm. feet. And we said that was us because we are his body and he is the head. Mm -hmm. See, our need for an intercessor, not only are we interceding for others, 
we have our own personal intercessor, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ, who intercedes for us. Mm -hmm. We have Hebrews 8, 1. So he's our example that we are to follow, but he, he is actively interceding for us. Now, the main point of what had been said is this, that we have a great high priest who has taken a seat at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens to minister in the sanctuary and in the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched, not man. And that's our Lord Jesus as our great high priest who intercedes for us. I'm going to, let's go to the Isaiah 59, 16. And he saw that there was no man and, he, and was astonished that there was no one to intercede. Then his own arm brought salvation to him and mm. his righteousness upheld him. Yes, so he was our, our first intercessor who interceded for our salvation. Mm. But God is looking for intercessors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hebrews seven sixteen and 17. has become such not on the basis of a law of physical requirement but according to the power of an indestructible life for it is witness of him thou art a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek and so he's our great high priest and also go down the 25th verse hence also he is able to save forever those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have an intercessor. We're not only to be intercessors in this world, but we have an intercessor mm -hmm. who always lives. And I thank mm -hmm. God for that. Mm -hmm. yes. And I think much of his intercession is within our own conscience. Mm -hmm. Come on, <laughs> you know, you can do better, mm -hmm. you know, you can do it, yeah. buck up. <laughs> fear not. <laughs> yes, fear not, you can do that, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. I think he intercedes by making the word of God just very real mm -hmm. to our hearts, that's part of his intercessory work. First uh, John 2, 1. My little children, I'm writing these things to you that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So he's mm -hmm. advocating on our behalf. Uh, Romans 8, 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, mm -hmm. who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Well, who is the deep state? Yeah. <laughs> who is it? Who are these? Yeah, who can bring a charge against have. God's elect? Yes. Yeah. He's the one who justifies. Right. Who can condemn? 
So not only is the Lord Jesus our intercessor, but we have the Holy Spirit as our helper. Mm -hmm. Acts 1.8, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. Mm -hmm. uh, the Romans 8.26 and 27, that we don't know how to pray as we ought, mm -hmm. but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings too deep for words. Mm -hmm. And he who searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And so the Holy Spirit is our helper in this intercession. And that's why we pray in the Spirit, because the Spirit himself intercedes. Hallelujah. And will the Father answer the prayer of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Yes, he will. Uh, John 14, 16 through 18. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knows him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you, and mm -hmm. shall be in you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have the Holy Spirit, Romans fifteen thirteen. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So here again, he's mm -hmm. our helper, inspiring faith in our hearts. You know, he makes the word real, and that inspires faith. Now we have Satan's greatest deception, which was a lesson we had in the Word series. But he seeks to distract us. First uh, Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. So we're to be on our guard, be sober, mm -hmm. be vigilant, mm -hmm. be watchful. Uh, James 4, 7. Well, he got Judas, didn't he? He did. Yeah. But God's eyes are roaming the earth looking to support the... The That's right. righteous, strong. Yeah, Amen. <laughs> but Judas was not sober and vigilant. He was, you know, sneaking things up. Yeah. The little things are it, what it gets was. The little foxes. Yes, spoil mm -hmm. vine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the deflection begins so subtly, and, and yes. pretty soon you're way off the road. Mm -hmm. uh, did we do the James four seven? Mm -hmm. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Isn't that good news? Mm -hmm. That is good news. Mm -hmm. We do two things. We submit ourselves mm -hmm. to God. Mm -hmm. You know, and when we submit ourselves to God, we're automatically turning our back on the devil. Mm -hmm. That's right. And then he's got to run away. Because he can't, he can't defeat Christ. He knows that. And Christ yeah, has already so defeated him, so when we put ourselves in Christ's arms, mm -hmm. he runs away. Mm -hmm. Nothing else he can do. By where his body. That's right. We're abiding in him. Mm -hmm. Exactly. No weapon formed against us in prosper. Ephesians right. 6 11 through 18. And that's a familiar verse. I don't think we'll read the whole thing, but it's put on the full armor of God. You know, every single piece is important. The shield of faith, you know, the sword of the Spirit, and then prayer is also there. You know, it's interesting that Goliath had the full armor on, but it's natural. <laughs> there was one little spot that was not covered, and God put him, took, took him down. But with us, it's it's a spiritual armor mm -hmm. that there's no there's no cracks in it. Right. It's, and, and it's protects rock us solid. from all the fiery yes. darts yes. of the devil. Uh, point F, uh, building ourselves up for intercessory prayer. And so we, it's 
taken from you know the faith series, our, our thinking pillar, our believing pillar, confessing pillar, acting pillar. So our thinking has to be uh, built up. Philippians 4, 7 through 9. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. Yes. So think on those things. And the things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things in... The God of peace will be with you. Mm -hmm. And so our minds need to be built up and we need to, you know, corral, corral our minds, not let it just wander mm -hmm. aimlessly, but uh, bring it back so we have purpose. The believing must be right. John 1, 12. As many as received them, he gave the power to become children of God, even to those who believed in his name. Mm -hmm. Then the confessing pillar, Romans 10, 9, and 10, that if we confess with our mouth Jesus is Lord, believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. And I was. Mm -hmm. That's just what I did that night. Mm -hmm. I believed and I, I confessed, repented. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it happened, and it was... It was everything I had, but it was so simple. Mm. Uh, that was what was astounding. It astounded mm. me. Mm. I was confessed. And then mm. you went from darkness to light, just like mm. that. And I didn't know how to explain it, but I knew something drastically mm. changed mm. for the better. Hallelujah. Mm. <laughs> Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> so God's, well, the acting pillar, James 1, 22 through 25. But prove yourselves doers to the to doers of the word and not mere hearers who delude yourself. For the one who is a hearer of the word and not a doer is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he's immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. But one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but a, an effectual doer, this man shall be blessed in what, in what he does. What a beautiful promise. Mm -hmm. You know, looking at the law of liberty, which is the law of love. Mm -hmm. He said, you're blessed in everything that you do. Uh, well, there's no striving. There's the absence of striving. Mm -hmm. There's the absence of turmoil. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can go through it, but there's a peace that there is. settles in. In and spite of all the confusion around. And I, I lived for, you know, I just had a, a love party time. But there was, it was always so empty. When I really looked at it, it was empty. But there's mm. abiding joy mm -hmm. in Christ. Amen. Mm. Even after all these years, it's still there. <laughs> you know when he smiles. <laughs> Amen. You know I mean, it, it grows. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it just, it doesn't stay steady. It Sweeter grows. Sweeter he used to. G, God's word is the foundation for intercessory prayer. Uh, because it, it, you know, we can use his word when we come to him. Mm -hmm. uh, God in his word, Psalm 33, 6 and 9. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth, all their host. For he spoke it, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. Yes, just by his word. Hebrews 4.12 The word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing to the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow 
And this is discerner of the thoughts and intentions of the hearts. And so we come with God's word. Now the truth of God's word. John 8, 31 and 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Hallelujah. Indeed. It certainly does that. John 17, 17. I believe that's the one that says, Sanctify yes, them through thy truth. Mm -hmm. Thy mm -hmm. word is truth. Yeah. Uh, we must keep God's word. Deuteronomy 30, 14 through 19. Again, these are essentials for an intercessor. We must keep his word. But the word is near you in your mouth, and in your heart that you may observe it. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity, and that I have commanded you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments, his statutes and his judgments, that you may live and multiply, and that the Lord your God may bless you in the land which you are entering in to possess it. See how far do I go? 19. 19. But if your heart turns away and you will not obey, it's always a matter of the will. Mm -hmm. You will not obey, but are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. Mm -hmm. You shall not prolong your days in the land where you're crossing the Jordan to enter it. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I've set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. So choose life in order that you may live, you and your descendants. And how do we choose life? By loving the Lord your God, by obeying his voice, and by holding fast to him. For this is your life and the length of your days. They may live in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. And of course, the land that we are to live in is the land of promise. You know, no matter what country we are in this world, God has a land of promise for us, a promised land. And this is a land of abundance where he takes care of our needs. Uh, Jesus spoke about and used the word of God, Matthew 4, verse 4. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Verse 7, Jesus mm -hmm. said, On the other hand, it is written, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. In verse 10, Then Jesus said to him, Be gone, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And so the mm -hmm. Lord used the word of God, but it's not only for him, it's for us as well. Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law shall not be part of thy mouth, of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest Observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Amen. Uh, Psalm 19, 11. 119. 119, 11, and 30.
Thy word have I hid in my heart yes. that I might not sin against thee. Mm. In verse 30, I have chosen the way of truth. Thy judgments have I laid before me. Amen. So in summary, an intercessor is one who stands between you know, someone in need in prayer mm-hmm. and the Father in heaven. You know, and Jesus is our intercessor. Mm-hmm. And he interceded for us by going to the cross. Mm-hmm. And now he's sitting at the right hand of God. And he also intercedes for us. And as I said before, I believe his intercessory role is with our own conscience. You know, in encouraging us, bringing us along, you mm-hmm. know, revealing the truth. Holy Spirit also intercedes for us. The groaning's too deep for words. Mm-hmm. And the example of an intercessor that Jesus gave, we talked about last night, where you have a man who has a friend, mm-hmm. and the friend comes to him in the middle of the night mm-hmm. and on a long yeah. journey, and this this friend welcomes him, says, come on into my house. You know, so, you know, he's wanting to bring him in. He's wanting to feed him Mm -hmm. with something from God. And so he goes to the father and he knocks, you know, please give me some bread. You know, and he says, "Uh, you know, I'm busy. Uh, We're in bed. You know, the lights are off. And he keeps knocking. You know, he's not going to take no for an answer. Mm -hmm. And finally, he gets up and gives him the three loaves. Mm -hmm. You know, everything that he needs, I'll give to Mm -hmm. you. So Mm -hmm. to me, that's that's a beautiful picture of of intercession. Yes. He comes to him. He goes to God. God Mm -hmm. gives the bread, you know, and this man is fed. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And so intercession is going to God on behalf of someone else. Mm-hmm. And I believe another, the, to me, one of the most beautiful stories of intercession is the story of Esther in the Bible. Because her people had the sentence of death on them. Mm-hmm. And so she goes to the king, you know, knowing that, see, in the Old Testament, they were not invited. The New Testament is different. He says, come boldly to the throne of grace. Mm-hmm. Esther was not in that position to come boldly mm-hmm. because she could yeah. very well be killed. Mm-hmm. But with the blood of Christ, the sin is removed from our conscience. Mm-hmm. We can enter the holy place through the blood of Christ. Uh, we're clean and holy and we're accepted into the beloved. She didn't know if she'd be accepted or not. Mm -hmm. So she took a step of faith, went into the presence of the king, you know, spent those three days in fasting, Mm -hmm. preparing her heart, Mm -hmm. you know, getting herself right before God. But she interceded for the people Mm -hmm. and presented her case to the king, you know, as this wicked Haman. Mm -hmm. And, And she reversed the law of sin and death. And I see that as a role of an intercessor, you know, Mm -hmm. as we intercede for the lost. Mm -hmm. Because the lost have the sentence of death upon them. Mm -hmm. Because the soul that sinned it shall die. So there's a sentence of death. Mm -hmm. And so we go to the king and try to reverse that death death sentence. Mm -hmm. She took the sentence of death on herself. She didn't she did. know. She, did. she knew that if if Haman found out she was a Jew because he hated them, he did. that you know you got that, and then she had to go before the king. Would he accept her once he found out that she was a Jew? Mm-hmm. She was so you know she really died mm-hmm. in her own right. Mm-hmm. She had the sentence of death. Yes, and so God has called us to be intercessors, and. The last thing I'd like to share is that we were around a gentleman that was a missionary leader that did quite a bit of missionary work in China, could speak the language fluently. And 
you know, he, he just so impressed us with his life of intercession. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was busy all the time doing mm -hmm. ministry work, but he was always, you know, you'd be in the car mm -hmm. riding with him and you'd hear him praying in the spirit just so quietly, but enough mm -hmm. where you could hear what he was doing. And mm -hmm. he was just constantly. Mm -hmm. it was. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, we, we never saw him eat much because <laughs> he was out, he was fasting a lot wow. he was fasting and praying interceding it was just really made a deep impression on us you know that we are to be intercessors so that's our the end of our lesson on prayer tonight i'll close in prayer father in heaven we thank you that you are a prayer answering god and we know there's much more we could talk about because the bible is filled with the prayers of your saints and the men of old who conquered kingdoms, who mm. uh, made the sunset uh, stand still, divided the Red Sea. Lord, mm. they were men and women of prayer that changed the destiny of nations. And so, Father, open our eyes to the privilege that we have in prayer as your children. Uh, simply appealing to the Father, asking for bread on behalf of our friends that, that don't have bread and are spiritually hungry and spiritually dying. Mm. Father, I pray that you put, us in, put it in our hearts to intercede faithfully for our family members and our friends, our community, our nation that is so far from God mm, and so yes, desperately yes. in need of the bread of life. Yes, yes. And so, Father, we thank you for this lesson tonight. Yes, in Jesus' name, so amen. 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 amen.